Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Keyclo on Docker and some basic OpenID Connect flows. Let's get started. First step, let me open my terminal and um, enlarge my test, then go to my server. As you can see here, I've got traffic running, so I will be installing um, in Keyclo behind traffic. Traffic is in charge of getting the SSL certificate for, for my key clock. Um, next, I will open my browser, go to my blog, then this post. And let me just check if traffic is running fine, and it is. If you don't know how to install traffic, please check out my uh, older videos. I've got the detailed instructions there. And I also got the traffic config on my on my blog as well. So um, let's go back to my terminal. We will make a new directory here called Keycloak. And then I'm going to make a Docker Compose file with um, the content here. So there are three things we need to change here. The first thing is the domain. I'll change it to key.demo for dot fun. Um, there are three environment variables here. The first one is the user you want to uh, create when um, Keycloak container is initializing. Um, I'm going to use admin here. And for the password of that admin, I'll be using admin as well. Um, the third environment variable is um, to to, to say that this Keycloak is running behind a reverse proxy. So we are setting it as true. After that, we can just save it and we can run our Docker Compose command. No problem, so it's running. Uh, because my VPS, um, the resources is um, quite limited, so it takes a while to to load it. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that because this is for uh, demonstration purposes, I don't have any um, database to store all the configurations of Kikro. Um, in, in in your um, environment, you probably want to put a Postgres, for example, as the backend to save all the configurations. So let's just wait here. I'm going to fast forward this part. All right, so once you have seen this um, admin console listening message, it means it's ready. Um, let's go to this website. Oh, we can close the traffic page and then we can log in. So username will be admin, password admin. This is what we set on a Docker Compose file. The initial login will take you to this master RAM, so you can consider RAM as like a territory. Um, all the users and groups and all the clients, they don't share between RAMs. So for our demo, I'm going to create a demo RAM. Then a new client, which is application. So you can put different claims on different applications. Um, so I will put demo client as the client ID and also change the access type to confidential because um, I'm going to show you the password flow and client credential flow. Those are confidential flows. Um, enable the authorization um, here um, because I'm going to demo the authorization code flow. The service account is enabled automatically. If you enable that, and we can use that for client credential flow. For the valid redirect URL, this part I'm going to put HTTP localhost callback. So this URL will be used um, for um, IDP to uh, redirect the request back to the browser or you know your application once the authentication is completed. Um, so we can save it done and I'm going to create a user here the username is demo 
um, whatever information you want to put here because Keycloak is free. Not sure if it's if it's uh, open source, maybe not, but it's free, so you can test whatever you want. It's very very flexible. Uh, let's go to credential parts. Even for the password, you can put whatever you want. I just use demo and demo as the password here. The reason I want to do this video is that OpenID Connect is becoming very very popular. And it's not very easy to get your hands on uh, when you first started. And there are so many different um, OpenID providers there like Azure AD, Okta, Off0, things like that. But those ones are pretty difficult to get started with. With Keyclo, because it's free of charge and give this um, flexibility to, to the user so you can you will know and learn how to use OpenID. Okay, so um, I think we are all set. Let's go back to our terminal and go back to my host machine and I will copy from here. So I'm going to set some environment variables here. Uh, for the keyclaw keyclaw host, I'm going to put key.demo for fun. RAM is demo, client ID is demo client, and the client secret is here. So there are multiple ways for um, your request to communicate with the token endpoint to, re uh, to get the token. Um, there are signed JWT, there are signed um, certificates, things like that. Uh, we are using the basic client secret here. If you're interested to know how to use um, signed JWT, for example, uh, leave your comment down below. I will see if I can make a video for that. Um, let's put it here. All right, so we are all set. Come back to here, we are going to demo some authentication flows. The first one I want to demo is the password flow. So as you can see, we are just requesting a token at the um, OpenID Connect token endpoint. The flow is password flow with client ID, client secret, with username and password. You can adjust this one to suit your uh, needs. And we're putting a scope open ID here. So if we put a scope open ID here, Keycloak will return an ID token and access token to us. Um, not all the um, IDP support that. For example, Curity doesn't support OpenID scope for password flow. Um, but anyway, since um, Keycloak supports it, we will put it here. Um, I'm going to show you the result first. So you can see there is a access token and ID token. Let's just decode the access token first. So normally the access token would be used to um, grant permissions to the user. Um, decode. So that's why you can see um, RAM access and resource access on your access token. And ID token on the other hand are used to identify the user. So if we check the content here, we can see it doesn't really have any access thing here. It's just got the username, um, email address, and what's the client ID for that application. So the ID token is perfect for identify which user is accessing the resource. And access token can be used to identify what privilege this user has. Okay, um, so let's go to next the client credential flow. For the client credential flow, you don't need to um, put in the username and password, just simply the client ID and client secrets. Um, we're also requesting the token from the token endpoint. Um, I'm putting S here. I don't want to see that and go to JQ. So if we see here, we've got an access token. And if we decode it, We can see that um, we've got a preferred username, username here as service account, demo client, which means uh, because this is client credential flow, normally this is used between machine to machine. So the username will always be the same for the same application on this flow. Uh, so the other machine knows which um, application is talking to them. Um, let's go to the next one, which is the introspection flow. Uh, what introspection does is you can pass a token to introspection endpoint and then it will return whatever information is related to that token to you. Um, it, 
doesn't really uh, make sense for you um, when you first see because we've got all the information in JWT, right? But there are some IDP there, they don't use JWT, they use OPEC tokens. So you don't get information from the token itself. You have to, um, you know, for example, use introspection to get information uh, related to that token. So I'm going to request a new token first, and I'm going to try the introspection endpoint, which is this one. Um, let me copy the token. Yep, yeah, um, I probably want to um, use JQ to format that. Yep, yeah, you can see the information is basically the same. Uh, we've got a expiry time and um, issue time. So when this token was issued and when it will expire. And also the same issuer, you know, the username, things like that. So this is introspection uh, endpoint. Um, very useful if you are getting an OPEC token from your IDP. All right. So the last flow I want to show you is the authorization code flow. This is could be one of the most important flow for OpenID Connect. Imagine you've got a single page application that your user click a login button on your website and then they will be redirect to the IDP for login. After they successfully logging in, they will be redirect back to your application URL with a code. Then your application can use that code to decode um, sorry, not deco to redeem a access and ID token from the IDP. Let me show you how. So first we were going to print that URL here because we've got all the environment variable ready. Next, I'm going to um, go to this website. Um, I'm going to try with a private window. Uh, let's log in. So you can see after we log in, we will be redirect back to the local host callback URL, which we set earlier with a session state and the code here. Let's just copy that code, save it as environment variable. Um, then we can use um, our call here to redeem the token. I'll use JQ for formatting. So you can see we successfully redeemed the token, access token, uh, refresh token and ID token. Because you've got a refresh token here, your user doesn't need to log in again and again. So you can always use the refresh token. I mean, your application can always use the refresh token to um, get a new access and ID token. Uh, okay. So um, that's all I want to show you with curl. I also prepare a um, Insomnia collection for you to use. Let me show you how to use that. Let me open Insomnia first. And then I will just copy this link. Yeah. Let me copy this link. Then I will create URL, fetch and imports. And we can see all the flows here. And host name is key.demo for fun. RAM is demo, client ID is demo, client, client secret. Let's go back here and done. All right, so now we can try different um, floats here. So we can say send, you've got access token for client credential. We've got introspection, so we will select some uh, flow, so which token we want to introspect. Let's say I want to introspect the um, access token for password um, flow. Let's just hit, it will tell us, give us this one. So if we change the access token to ID token, for example, it will give us different information, right? Um, then it's the password flow, which I believe you are familiar with now. Um, access token, refresh token, ID token. If I don't use open ID, I will only get access token, right? Um, and then the refresh token flow, which I demo um, here. So um, you can use the refresh token to get uh, whatever um, the password flow returns. So if I put back the um, open ID, which I do now, uh, if you refresh again, you will see an access token and ID token. All right. So redeem code is the same as the last step here. So I will not demonstrate again. There is one more. It's called user info. Um, so user info endpoint can be used to um, get the user information only. So you can see um, if we um, do the introspection, we've got a lot of information about this client, things like that. But with user info endpoint, you will be using an access token to 
to call that endpoint, user info endpoint. And when you do that, you can only get the user information here um, and whether or not it's email, verify, whatever. So it's uh, less information. So some people would prefer using user info. Um, the last thing I want to show you is the authorization code um, here, um, which um, you just need to click the fetch token button, login, and Insomnia will um, take care of um, redeeming um, the tokens for you. So that's all I want to show you today. I hope this video can help you to get started with OpenID Connect. And once you all get familiar with all these um, different flows and what endpoint you need to call, it's very easy to apply that knowledge on other um, OpenID providers like Azure AD, Okta, etc. Um, if you have any questions, please leave your comments um, down below and I will try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.